might be the morning when you're watching this, but it's my morning. <laughs> I kind of am doing an impromptu cheesecake recipe right here now. I said, when I'm in the middle of doing it, it's a bank holiday here in Ireland. And I said, it would be nice to have some thing nice and sweet treat to have this evening. So I'm making my very easy, simple strawberry cheesecake. I will have the full recipe in the comments down below. I might add in the little things here when I'm editing it, but um, for now, this is what I'm using. I'm doing half my recipe today. I'm using my small cheesecake tin. That's, I'm not even dressed. That's how impromptu this is right now. But anyway, it's not even like professionally set up. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing a small cheesecake tin. This is my small um, spring form tin. And it's perfect for us. We're a small family of four. And two kids who absolutely adore cheesecake. So that's what we are having uh, this evening. After we're having homemade pizzas. Might film me making homemade pizzas. Might not. Might add all of this into the one thing. We should see what happens. Uh, but for right now, strawberry cheesecake. So just as a pre-warning, we're going to have a kid, an animal, a tree. Anything just walk in here right now. So <laughs> that's how impromptu it is. What I'm going to use for the cheesecake today is... 200 grams of digested biscuits. This is a 400 gram pack and we're using half of it. The reason being, I would usually use the full pack and I will list the full um, amount of ingredients in the bottom comment section or in the caption. But um, I'm, using, I'm making half of one today for us. We're just a small family of four. So this is my smaller spring form tin. And Sam is going to knock over the tripod. <laughs> Your dad is going to rescue you. Um, 70 grams of good owl Irish butter. And we are going to melt that in the microwave and mix it with these. Now, I would, if I was doing, doing this amount, I would put it into the food processor to preserve the biscuits. But today, it's only a small amount. I'm going to pop them into this and break them up. I'm going to use one tub of full fat uh, cream cheese. I'm going to use 250 mils of fresh whipping cream which I'm going to do in my food mixer and I have a block of jelly so like this one now sometimes I use sugar free one because it's very um what's the word it's nearly it has a better like setting agent in it um so it's more gelatinous if that makes sense but anyway this is just another block of jelly it could work fine and um I Put boiling water into that and it obviously melted like you like you would make normal jelly um but now it's nice and cool and i don't want to use the same amount but i would put the amount that you need to make uh your jelly in the in the in the can i even talk today in the microwave 20 second blasts that's what i would recommend for butter chocolate butter and chocolate <laughs> i'm going to add it into the biscuits i'm just going to do it in the bag i mean you know i don't think i've ever done this before but we'll see what happens you know I mean, how bad can it be i just don't want to be like you know a bowl is washing up i mean there's enough to be doing during the day it's a bank holiday, so we have no school today, thank God! <laughs> For everyone, I think. So now, that worked out really well. There you go, there's my idea, there's a tip for you. Into the spring form tin. And we're just going to flatten it out, like so. So that's it now, I'm going to pop this into the fridge. And just leave it there until I'm ready to put the topping on it. It won't be that long, but this should be a few minutes, but sure, it will start to set. If you have like a deep chest freezer, pop this in. We are going to make the topping, basically. So what I'm going to do here is pop 
in 250 mils of cream. This is 500 mils. Um, so half a liter. Yeah. Two. There we are. Two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah. And pop that into your stand mixer, or if you have a handheld whisk, perfectly. I actually don't have a handheld whisk. But what kind of a person am I that cooks? <laughs> um, so anyway, we're going to do that. Can I do this? No. I wait for a second to put that on. I'm going to pop in the soft cream cheese, which you see me doing. And that is a 200 gram packet of, cr of cream cheese. I'm going to add in uh, 55 grams of strawberry jam. Yes. Um, I might add in a few chopped strawberries as well because these need to be used up before they go they go off. And I'm going to add in my jelly. we have whipped the cream cheese added in the jelly added in the strawberry jam i don't want any sh extra sugar to this there's plenty of it already um and then i am going to hold on now yeah i'm going to add in the whipped cream Not butter. My dear, my dear mother, she likes butter ice cream. <laughs> oh, she's going to kill me when she watches this. But anyway, I'm going to add the cream into the jet. What do you want? Some? Somebody loves cream in this house. There you go, gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> add cream into the cream cheese, jelly, and uh, jam mixer mixture. I know it sounds so weird, doesn't it, but like, honest to God, trust me. It is going to be the nicest strawberry cheesecake you might ever make. And then we're going to gently, gently close it in. No need to get excited. Plenty of time. Using a figure of eight. By the way, also, I just want to say, uh, I'm not a chef, I'm not um, a trained cook. I am completely self-taught and did so and learned so much from my own mum and my um, grandmother, my nanny and yeah, watching so many cooking shows over the years, um, Jamie Oliver, Nigella, huge inspiration and sure look at, that's how I learned everything, you know, practice, practice, I mean that's, that's the main thing and if you have that love for something you're obviously going to put your all into it so this just takes a couple of minutes to actually bring it together and then we're going to get our base out of the fridge pop it in on top and that's it bob's your uncle at least two hours in the fridge he said now i prefer overnight but this is but this is why i'm making this early this morning so that and um, it has literally all day in the fridge before we stuff into it. Just to give it a last, just I kind of over whipped the cream there a small bit and it's lumpy. Not lumpy, but it's hard to mix in with this spatula and speed things up. <laughs> and that's it. There is our gorgeous, thick, and creamy. Mix. You like so? Yummy! I mean, you could just eat like this, like this. Do you want somebody? Uh, you, 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 you can lick the spoon, okay? Promise. Now, I'm 
just going to smooth it out. You can add some strawberries now if you want, but I just prefer actually doing it in the end. There you go. Say hi to everyone. Hello. Now, that's it. Into the fridge for at least two hours, if not all day or overnight. And yeah, we're going to enjoy this this evening. some milk in the local shop and I'm going to make some pizza up. There's no point in showing you the dessert if we're not going to show you the main course and we're having homemade pizza dough this evening um, with some serrano ham, some mozzarella, some pesto, some cherry tomatoes that I have and uh, some stream cherry tomatoes and some chorizo and that's what we're going to have for dinner tonight. So this basically is one of the simplest, most simple um, pizza doughs that you will ever make. It's a couple of ingredients, you know exactly what's going into it, and it is so delicious. I don't have a pizza oven at the minute. That's on my list of goals to save and to save for to buy one for outside. I would love a pizza oven. I would even build one, like a red brick one, beautiful in the garden. Um, and now I'm just wafting on, but yeah, you 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 get the picture. <laughs> it's gonna be cooked in the oven, and we're gonna eat al fresco this evening and have our dessert, and we might have a glass of something. I'd hit a brick wall at the minute, <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Um, anyway, I ordered a large 16 kg bag of flour when all of this pandemic began because, as you know, flour, eggs, certain items were so hard to get. And this is actual um, bread flour, and we're very blessed to have um, a local mill in County Kilkenny to actually deliver online large quantities of flour so it's been fantastic and we've been working our way out of this making homemade bread homemade pizza dough and um kind of wait for along the way and teaching scott too and sam is a little bit small he's only two but um yeah it's been great fun the last few weeks teaching him how to cook pizza dough homeschooling everything else <laughs> so much <laughs> oh god so anyway i'm gonna pop this on my stand mixer as i said it's this most simple little recipe you could ever use um actually i'm not going to do that i'm going to weigh out my flour first hold on um a few ingredients flour yeast some olive oil salt a bit of sugar obviously to um activate the yeast that's it this works away for 10 minutes on its own and i can go off make a cup of coffee waking myself up bob's your uncle and we're gonna have fabulous pizzas this evening so yeah let's get making our pizza though I'm going to use, um, what am I going to use tonight, for, or today, five, for, 500 grams of strong white bread flour, uh, or I think you need zero, zero flour as well, but this is just strong bread flour, it has, and the difference is, like I've made, I've made like a, a no need one, where I left it to the yeast and like normal plain or self-raising flour to develop and to ferment overnight for 24 hours and it was absolutely fabulous as well and um, this takes about an hour and the difference between this flour and normal flour is it has a higher protein content in it than the plain or self-raising flour and it's better able to i believe um hold its structure <laughs> when it's when the yeast is worth doing this business i'm not a bread maker i'm learning every day this is so new to me i never worked and made my own yeasted bread until all of this pandemic began and i'm actually looking forward to the, to the journey and creating new breads and making some on here and new recipes with you all as well so yeah in here 500 grams of strong bread flour or zero zero flour i'm going to get my yeast right give me a second 
500 grams, about half a teaspoon of salt. I have a half a tablespoon of caster sugar in here and seven grams of dried yeast. Um, I got a tip off another YouTuber who's actually a baker and makes bread and he said always to check your yeast, even if it's instant, but I use dried yeast. I don't know if it's instant. I don't know. I'm not a baker, so um, or up on it <laughs> on the terminology. But to test your yeast, and um, because dried yeast says, you know, you can just throw it in with the with the flour. But what if it's it's actually dead and it's not alive anymore? Because yeast is a living thing. So that's what we're doing. That's going to be there for ten minutes now to well, five to ten minutes. Just you know to bubble up and make sure that the yeast is actually alive. Then we're going to add it in here, turn on the mixer, and it is going to work away on its own for ten minutes when I make myself a cup of coffee. activated and it's lovely and foamy and creamy looking that's the way it should be and I'm going to add this in here now I'm going to pop on my dough hook I swear I'm forgetting my, my head today that is not a dough hook <laughs> the dough hook the lazy wheel I don't know like I do enjoy actually kneading it myself but like I need all my time this is so instant <laughs> um, I'm going to add in two tablespoons of olive oil I just added it in here, you can add it into the water if you want. But I, this is the way I like to do it. So I add it into the flour and then I give it a mix. I'm going to add in my yeast and water. Just make sure we have every single little bit of it. to work away itself here for the next 10 minutes. Once it comes together, I will set a timer and leave it to work away itself just for 10 minutes and make myself a cup of coffee and I'll be back.
you work on any background. I was here working on my making my, my pizza sauce. So, I'm gonna get this out in had 10 minutes. I'm just gonna actually wash my wash my hands in flour here. Apparently that's what's called. <laughs> oh, anyway. Now we're gonna get the I just wanna give it a quick knead, like it's obviously been working away there itself. Um but just to bring it together I suppose and bring it into a ball and then I'm gonna pop it into a big bowl which is going to be rubbed with olive oil and it's going to sit in my hot press for the next hour to hour and a half and then we're going to make pizzas. You can use it straight away which we're going to do this evening. Sometimes I make it the day before and I pop it into the fridge to leave it overnight to slow proof and it's even nicer the next day honestly or even like you can still make bread out of this if you wanted to cook it. Now if I was making bread I'd be proving it for at least two hours and then shaping it and leaving it for another proof until it's stubbled in size but that's all we're going to do today. That's it now. This is just the way it's probably like it's not the way I like to do it. But this is the way this is the way I do it and it works for me. So it's gonna shape it, bring it in under, under itself. And it's nice and springy. When bread is ready, I, ha I have learned that um, you have to be so careful with it when it has, has the second proof because it's so full of life, I suppose. And it's like, it jiggles. You know, like jelly jiggles? That's what it's like. So this obviously isn't. It's, it's you know, it has a good bring back to it but obviously it's going to have to um, prove away now and do its thing and become gorgeous. I'm going to, you put flour in here if you want, I just put a bit of olive oil so that um, it doesn't stick to the sides when it's trying to rise. Up. Now, in we go, give a bit of flour just in case, it shouldn't touch the top. This is a really big, um, a big kind of catering bowl, so it shouldn't reach that far, but it will definitely double in size from here, from what it is. Oh, let's see if I get shot in. So this one now, double in size, it should rise to about here, hopefully. Hopefully. And I'll be back to make pizzas. Yummy. Look at the sauce bubbling away. Delicious. as well is if I leave this in the fridge you have to take it out and like use it at room temperature nearly because it's so hard to work with now I like to use semolina instead of flour to roll out the, the actual pizza dough bases so now I'm going to bring that in on itself and just let it rest there for a couple of minutes um, and I'm going to decorate the cheesecake I'm going to put some cream to the top of it and I'm going to put some fresh strawberries on the top and maybe I'll drizzle the chocolate, we shall see. But that's there now and I will just leave that here. Like that and then cover it for a couple of minutes just to relax there for a few minutes. And um, my pizza sauce is also ready. It smells unbelievable. Actually, this is just gorgeous to have with your pasta. Um, you know last day before shopping and there's absolutely nothing but you have a little bit of pasta and a can of tomatoes it's absolutely perfect um, and such a tasty dinner with um a lovely smothering a, a snowfall of parmesan also excuse me because it's very warm here in my little town today it's about 26 degrees celsius and um the pollen count is through the roof so the hay fever is mad today so I'm going to get the cheesecake out of the fridge. I'm 
there she is. Beautiful princess and Lucy. Gorgeous and Lucy. Lucy. Is that weird word to say? Lucy. <laughs> I'm going to whip some cream. I'm just going to grab my um, mixer. Again, if you have a handheld whisk um, or beaters, work away. I'm just going to change it because I'm on the blade and move my. food processor that I bought is the absolute business. Let me slip in here like this. I think I have to do one of these. <laughs> I had to take them out for um to wash them obviously. Now to whisk away when I chop up some strawberries. Basil, mushrooms, and not forgetting my favorite, pineapple. I cooked these in a 220 degrees fan oven for approximately 12 to 15 minutes or until the cheese is golden and bubbling on top. I hope you really enjoyed this spontaneous vlog. <laughs> and I'm going to enjoy my delicious pizza and cheesecake. So I'll see you all soon.